She opened the door and here's this really charming man. It didn't take long for the lodger to become the lover. Everything, it was all fake. He had financially ruined her. He had emotionally raped her. How could somebody manipulate her to the point that she was willing to walk away from her daughter? Her decision to confront Ta was the worst decision of her life. My mother was my best friend. I was a kid that grew up classic dyslexic, so I always needed help. She couldn't read, she couldn't even sign a, a form for a job application. If I couldn't do something, I always relied on my mother. We had a bond and a trust and a love for each other that was phenomenal. If there was one penny left in the world, she would cut it in half and give me half that penny. We're, uh, we're ready for that. So when uh, we got an idea about doing a consignment store, my mom was my partner. Okay, here we go. Rolling and action. Hi. Welcome to Terry's Design and Consign. We have new, gently used, model home furniture. Terry and Loretta were like this great American success story knew the price would be $1,500. Terry's price, only $500. That's great, Mom. We had a successful business, but my mother was lonely. She had been single for about 18 years, and she really had a sense of depression and hopelessness. She was too young and too beautiful to live alone. And I thought, heck, I'm a good marketer. I can do this. We had gotten this idea from a TV show, let's run an ad to rent out a room, and more than likely, a, a gentleman's gonna respond to this. Loretta lives in a large home in Phoenix suburb Tempe. Plenty of room for a good-looking lodger. Two weeks after their ad ran, someone answered. So she opened the door, and here's this really charming man. Big smile on his face, bright, lit up eyes. He was very handsome. He saw the room, he liked it, he said, I'd like to take it, please. Wonderful. Well, we can go and sign the papers tonight. He very clearly gave her that feeling like, Wow, I'm really excited about you and, and how attractive you are. And she was ecstatic. And then he told him, I have uh, just a little bit of a money difficulty. I lost my wallet on a flight home from the UK. So he didn't have uh, any money and he didn't have an ID or anything. Have you got another form of ID? A driver's license, no. maybe. In the wallet, I need to get it all replaced. On one hand, her woman's side was just you know, she was beside herself. And then on the other hand, she goes, oh, I'm gonna be renting this guy and he needs to pay rent. Ta doesn't have any ready cash, but he does have the means to make it. He tells Loretta he's a successful inventor and entrepreneur. He had done something for the Olympics. He had been all over the world. He had gone to school with Donald Trump and he'd been a CEO. My mom was really torn. She said, let's pull back a little bit and let's meet a couple times and let me have a chance to talk to my daughter and, and get to know each other. About three or four days later, we set up a, a dinner at my house. I watched my mother, you know, fly in like twinkle toes. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. She wasn't lonely and that was worth everything right then. After dinner, Ta talks about his inventions. He sat down and he pulls out this big piece of paper. He started telling me all about this lawnmower blade that he's invented. 
and it was serrated so it cut the grass at a side and it was going to be a, a huge invention. It's just one among many gizmos that Ta has patented. He was just immediately extremely charming. Future success and happiness. It really was like we had known each other forever. I felt sold. This is what my mom's been looking for. A few days later, having paid neither rent nor deposit, Ta moves into Loretta's house. Ta was a very helpful man. He was a gourmet cook. He could fix anything. Those are the kinds of things that are very alluring to a woman. And he was going to be the handsome man she always wanted on her arm. Anyone who has ever read a romance novel knows this scene. It didn't take long for the lodger to become the lover. Ta found in Loretta not only a woman with her own checkbook, but a network of friends and relatives that he could also tap to get money for his investments. Are you ready for an experience of your lifetime? One of the inventions Ta hawks to Loretta's friends is a gadget that transforms walls into speakers. It was the most amazing sound that I'd ever heard. He was prepared. Any objection you might have or question you might have, he, he was ready to answer it. We want this and the lawnmower blade to go national. I decided to invest $6,000. People were investing in Ta because this was Loretta's man who was going to make a fortune and they were going to help all that happen and get rich themselves on the side. 6,000, 10,000. Not everyone buys into Ta's smooth sales talk, however. Loretta's sister, Darla, is alarmed. In 1987, I went to Phoenix to visit. I think if she had said she was dating somebody, it wouldn't have bothered us. But she said that he was living in her house, and she didn't know anything about him. We wondered, is he an axe murderer? Does he want to move in and steal her things and kill her? We weren't in high alarm, but we were concerned about it and thought somebody ought to meet him. He was so interested in letting me know how brilliant he was. I thought he was full of it. Oh, the sunsets in the morning. I said to Loretta, Loretta, your sisters and I are really concerned about this situation. Seems like too much too soon. He seems to have no family. You don't know any background. I know what I'm doing, and it's none of your business. And so I thought, it's time for me to shut up but I didn't like him. This man was not what he said he was. Six months in, Ta's inventions don't appear to be getting anywhere. My mom was getting anxious. Bringing home money, you know, helping pay the rent was real important. When do you think they'll get back to you? You need some sort of commitment. Close friends are increasingly concerned about the man Loretta is dating. Finally, Loretta agrees to ask an ex-boyfriend at the Justice Department to do some digging. Ta said he'd gone to the, to the business school with Donald Trump and he'd had all these degrees. He'd gone to Penn University. None of that was true. So are we in trouble? He goes, it's not that he's do he's, he doesn't show he's done something wrong, but it's a red flag. He says we need to be careful. He's just jealous that I found somebody I'm happy with. Loretta is confused. Is her newfound happiness about to unravel? Ta was not the person he said he was. Everything was all fake. We checked on him. There are red flags. We should be aware of it, but we were already involved in the situation. Eventually, my mom did say, I'm going to check it out with Ta. When Loretta challenges Ta, he admits he's been lying, but says it's not his fault. 
He talked about a really, really bad childhood. His father was really bad to him. She goes, did you really go to this school? I ran out of money and I needed to get a job. He really pulled on the heartstrings. Loretta bought the excuses because she really didn't want to be without a man. I think that for her, being with a bad man was better than being with no man at all. Life gets back to normal, but pressure is building from Loretta's friends. Loretta is aware that the investments are not getting repaid. She's aware that the inventions are not selling. I became suspicious after lending Ta $6,000 because in the ensuing months, I never heard when I would get my money back. He never conveyed to me that he was really trying to market the things that he was inventing. I felt uncomfortable going and saying I want my money back because of Loretta. But at some point you have to do that. I went and saw him face to face and told him the situation. Oh, you got it. I understand. No problem. I'll get the check to you next week. No problem. It's coming. Waited a little bit, same thing. Next week, it's coming. Nothing. This went on and on and on. I felt increasingly suspicious and increasingly disgruntled. Next thing I know, my mother and one of her best friends aren't friends anymore. He was totally insensitive to the discomfort around him as he is pushing people for money. It's not just lawnmower blades and speakers. Now Ta is talking about a new design for a massive solar plant. Solar is the future. I kept asking Ta, where, where is your income? Because you have these other inventions, they're not in the marketplace, so where do you, where do you get your funds? Don't worry, Gary. I've got investors all over, Chicago, Colorado, Canada. The investors, they were always imminent, and they were always in a position to invest. But the investment never materializes. She was well aware that this guy was ripping off her friends, but she was praying that in fact the ripoff would eventually turn into a solid return. Over the years, Ta never pays back a cent of the money he takes off Loretta's friends, and he never pays a cent towards the rent and bills. She started feeling very disillusioned, but didn't have the strength to push him out the door. Loretta's journals show us letter after letter she wrote to Todd demanding that he contribute to the household. She did this year after year after year. It gets almost silly, it's so repetitive, that she keeps saying, I'm going to make him pay. I'm going to make him be part of this household. He can't live off me forever. She was exhausted. He used her in so many ways. Ta was not only interested in his own inventions, he was interested in any place else that had money. And the place that had the most money, so visible and so at hand, was Terry and Loretta's business. To get his hands on the business, he needs Terry out of the picture. He said, you know, for you to really succeed, you need to overcome your dyslexia. I thought you might be interested in this. There's a summer program at Arizona State University where they work to help people who have a learning disability. Your mother and I can watch the furniture store while you're gone. He said that in, in such a true, caring manner that it felt like your father saying something to you that you would feel safe about. Terry leaves for Arizona happy that business is safe in her mother and Ta's hands. While Terry was away at school, Ta was taking over the business. They had always had a cash-only business. They would buy things, they would sell them, they would buy more things, sell those. Ta saw this as too slow, and he went after bank loans to buy more merchandise and to have bigger and bigger returns on the money. 
Yes, a business loan. When I got back there, I realized we've lost about $10,000. I said, this is, is crazy that there's this much money missing in this amount of time. This is nuts. This business was everything to me. This was like someone just walking in and taking, taking your child. I got mad. I got really upset. I remember just physically feeling, just get out of here. You know, let me in here. Let me, I gotta get back in here and take care of this. Mom, we need to talk. Look how much he spent. That was the first time my mother and I had fought. She says he knows what he's doing. He knows how to build a business. You have to spend money to make money. Mom, he is spending money on stuff we don't need. She's really wanting all these things about Todd to be real, to be good, and that she's made a good decision. So she took that position of this is who I'm standing behind him. We need him, Terry. He knows what he's doing. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to let this go down. I want him out. Three days later, I was sitting there in my office and she came in. She said, either you buy me out or I'll buy you out. And I remember being really in shock. I never thought of us as not being partners. My answer back was, there's no conversation. I buy you out. Fine. I'll have Ta drop the papers. Ta said he's got a lot of experience in corporate businesses and buyout agreements and stuff, and that he would do that to save us money. I really should have gone at that point to somebody, but I did know that him being in my business was dangerous, and I didn't want that. So the agreement we made was that it would be $140,000 and I would pay it over a year's time. I read through it and I signed it and I made the payments. That was the beginning where we learned not to tell each other everything anymore. Terry takes over the consignment store and goes it alone. Right. Here we go guys, uh, let's roll please. And action. Hi. Welcome to Terry's Consign and Design. I did my stuff and grew my business. Both of us were really busy starting our new lives in other directions. At Terry's, we sell it for you. You buy it like new. Two years after the buyout, everything was done and paid for. My doorbell rang. And I opened the door and my mother was dressed to the hilt. She looked literally like Alexis from Dynasty. It wasn't unusual for her to look as dressed up, but it was unusual for her to have such a cold air to her. And she said, You've been served. They were suing me for the business. She explained that the uh, buyout agreement was done incorrectly and that she still was an owner of the company. Either I return to work next week, or you buy me out again. I, I was just stunned. I didn't even hear the buyout and the, and the money. That really isn't what was the problem. It was my mother was gone. This woman was not my mother. I didn't know who she was. If there was a cord between a mother and a child, and I cut it. I knew that Tom had probably done that deliberately. How could somebody manipulate her to the point that she was willing to walk away from her daughter? Terry starts making payments to buy her mother out of the business for a second time. I didn't speak to her for a year. I missed her, and I wanted her to know I still cared, and I still loved her. 
finally Mother's Day came around, I made the decision to send her flowers. Yes, I'd like 24 purple tulips. And my heart, no matter whatever happened to us, she was still my mother. Hello? Have I got you to thank for these flowers? Yes. Loretta invites her daughter over for a reconciliatory dinner. I knew she still loved me, and I know I still loved her. I could feel my mother wanting to hug me and make things better, but there was this thing, Ta, and it was clear that the game had changed. This was Ta's house now. I looked right at Ta and I said, why did you do this? Why did you come back and sue me for this money? And he said, did you ever hear of the donkey trainer? And I said, no. The donkey trainer would go in and take a big sledgehammer and hit the donkey right between the eyes and then leave. And I said, what does that mean? He says, you do this to get their attention. And I said, you know what? The next time you want my attention, pick up the sledgehammer and hit me because it would hurt less than what you did. I was sitting in the car and my mother knocked on the window. I'm so sorry, Terry. We just talked and I said, stop it. Don't make me buy you out twice. She said, okay. Stop making the payments. Thanks. Loretta drops the lawsuit, but the damage is done. I know we wanted to embrace, but at that moment, you just kind of both want to just leave it at that. Our life was never the same. The years pass, and Loretta falls more deeply under Ta's influence. I've become conditioned to expect failure. And I'm losing confidence that it will ever be different. Loretta was no longer in control of her own life. Every month when she thought she was dutifully making her house payments, she was actually handing over over $1,000 to Ta, who was taking that money and stealing it from her. Finally, in December of 2004, everything changed. That was the day she discovered that her house was in foreclosure. She was losing her house, and as far as she's concerned, everything is over. Loretta finally snapped. He knew this day was coming. And I think that he was prepared for it. Get out, get out of my house now! Her decision to confront Ta was the worst decision of her life. Get out! I got a phone call about 4.30ish or so, and at first I thought, oh, what does he want? Yes, Ta? Ta said, your mother and I went on vacation down in Tucson. Went to the store to... Ta tells Terry that her mom vanished while visiting the mall. This is ridiculous. She, she's not just missing. I said, have you gone in and talked to anybody? He goes, okay, I'll do that. I got another call at about six. Yes, Ta? Yeah, I've talked to the security guard and no one has seen her. Terry, I've looked everywhere. So he called the police and reported her missing. I jumped in the car and drove to Tucson in less than an hour. It usually takes two hours to get there. The first 24 hours in any missing person case are extremely important. After that, the chances of locating people or gathering evidence is significantly diminished. Detectives spoke with Todd Benderly then I dropped her off to do some shopping. 
By this point, several hours have gone by since Loretta disappeared. When I went back to meet her, I couldn't find her. Mr. Benderly seemed uh, pretty calm, given the uh, seriousness of the matter. Ta tells investigators that he and Loretta stopped by the mall around 2 p.m. on the way into Tucson. They agreed to meet outside Dillard's department store at 4, but she didn't show. I searched the whole mall. Then I went to security and reported her missing. At this stage in the investigation, detectives are treating this case as a missing persons case. I really believed that she had been kidnapped because of being wealthy and really well known all over Arizona. I did notice that someone was following me though, in a van. Acting on the kidnap theory, Tucson PD swings into action. Tucson Police Department organized and deployed numerous officers. The air support unit was also actively involved in the search. Later that evening, Terry arrives at the hotel Ta and her mom are booked into and finds more questions than answers. It really didn't make a lot of sense why he was sitting so calmly. You can't just sit there, Ta. We need to go find her. Listen, let's get a flyer made. Let's call the, the newspaper. Print me off a picture. Yeah, that's good. I said I was heading out and I was gonna go searching for him. And uh, I said, you wanna go with me? He goes, I need to get a bite to eat first. I remember looking at him and puzzled, like, let's get going. The only thing I had to go on was there was a kidnapping. The next morning, Ta and I went to the mall together. We were looking around and he was showing me like where he had dropped her off. I saw him looking up where the security cameras were on the outside. So I noticed that, but I didn't make much out of it. I just kept busy. With still no sign of Loretta, Detective Pacheco begins to check out Ta's story. He stated that he searched for her extensively before reporting her missing. The video surveillance tape that I viewed shows Mr. Benderly coming into the department store and immediately going to the customer service to report her as a missing person. Also, Mr. Benderly said he stopped halfway from Phoenix to Tucson to gas up, buy a couple of sandwiches, then arrived in Tucson in about 12.30, but the video showed that he checked in at 2.44 p.m. None of those videos ever showed Loretta Bowersock. Could see Tom Benderly, but not Loretta. It seemed very suspicious. We headed back to the hotel, and the police were there. They had gone in there, and they had taken everything out of the suitcases, and everything was set out in the room. I looked at the counter, and there was a whole spread of all my mother's jewelry. All of her gold and her diamonds and her rings and all of her expensive jewelry were all laying there. I remember that moment taking a deep swallow. There were th four big suitcases and it had Ta's clothes and shirts and sweaters and just full. And then over here was my mother's suitcase and it had four shirts, four pants, four socks and they really don't match. Then the real shock was he also had uh, a whole bunch of knives and guns and bullets. It was at that point in my head, I wouldn't say it out loud, I, I knew it. I didn't see Ta anymore. I saw a gangster. It's not just Terry who's thinking Ta is behind her mom's disappearance. We had a very solid circumstantial case against him. However, I don't have a body and I don't have a confession. The police leave and then Ta sits down and says, listen. Here's the money I owe you, Terry. 
I remember thinking, why would you go down to Tucson to pay me back money? That's a lie. As soon as I got in the room, I had a phone call. Hello? It was the police station, and they said that Ta was gonna be going down to the station and that I should come down. Okay. Also, I really don't think that you should stay there tonight. After what happened this afternoon, you probably would be better if you went somewhere else. And we'll get in touch with you tomorrow. Bye. I just started grabbing stuff and went to a hotel about four miles away and checked in. I was scared. Chances are pretty good this man had murdered my mother. When we got to the police station, I saw Ta. I remember looking up and thinking that he looked really weathered and, and, and small, and he usually is a very big looking man, and you could see he was just like trying to figure out what to say. I remember feeling even a little bit of sadness for him. Mr. Banderley, will you come with me, please? Based on all the information that I had, my instincts were telling me that Todd Enderly was a suspect in this case, and I needed to probe a little deeper. You guys left Phoenix about what time to drive down here? Probably about 10.30. And did you stop anywhere? I guessed. And what time do you think that was? Um, 11.30. We have you at 1.58 p.m. How can that be? I don't know. How can that be? Ta's timeline doesn't add up. Alarm bells are ringing loud and clear for detectives. This area, there are miles and miles of desert, most of it uninhabited. Mr. Benderly had spent time that he couldn't account for. You've got me at a terrible disadvantage. Okay. And I, I, want, have, I, I slept want... for 40 minutes last okay, night. Sure, you, you just want to clarify some things. Let, let me say this, please. Let's, mm -hmm. let's communicate. He begins to get angry when he became angry and frustrated. He's even less likable. You need to respect the fact that I'm trying to give you information in as clear a form as I can. With Ta on the back foot, police go on the offensive. You're taking her to the mall at 4 o'clock, the time you said you were supposed to pick her up. I can't believe that. Well, it's, it's right here on the paperwork. He is cornered. He can't think of uh, lies fast enough. I'm wondering if my watch was off. I wear this watch. This is the watch. What I'm time wearing. does your watch say right, right now? Right now, it's. Uh, I mean, that's because I just said it. This is. And a, was it off when you said it? Was it was off when I said it. How, this is how long, an, how off This is an it? automatic. How far off was it yesterday? Uh, I don't well, know. When you said it to, I don't know. You don't. Know? I don't know. And she had, you know, her credit cards and stuff. And she she had, had her clutch, which is which is a woman's wallet. Um, she uses checks with ID. While Ta is grilled in Tucson, police in Phoenix search the home he shares with Loretta. We were asked to do a search of the home and we found a purse um, that contained credit cards and an ID belonging to Loretta Bowersock. Why would your wife's purse be at home? I don't know. Well, it's there. I don't know why it would be in the purse, why the purse would be at home. I really don't know. He was caught off guard, didn't know that we actually had detectives up at their house or in a search warrant, and we had uncovered this evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. I really I'm, don't. That stinks. That stinks big time. I'm feeling some frustration uh, that I believe that something happened to Loretta. You care about Loretta? Yes, I do very much. Look at her. Yes, I see her. Now, do the right thing and tell us where she's at. I have no idea. I think you do. I, I don't. He gets very nervous, and I thought he was close to cracking. I don't I, know where she is. If I knew where she I was, think I would have. I don't. As I far as I right. know, she is here in as far as Tucson. You know, as far as I know, she never made it to Tucson. I'm not the cause of it. What the is the cause? Of it? Then give me an I explanation. I don't know. I really because don't know. But he was able to collect himself by just shaking his head and repeating, 
I don't know where she is. You had nothing to do with her disappearance? I had nothing to do with her disappearance. You didn't kill your wife? No, I did not. You didn't murder Loretta? No, I did not. You know how I know you're lying? No. When I ask you these questions, you close your eyes and you look down? That's classic. You're on your way out, buddy. By now, Detective Pacheco is convinced Ta is guilty as sin. But without a body, he has no choice but to let him walk. It was pretty frustrating because I knew deep down that Loretta was most likely dead and that Ta Vanderly had killed her. At that point, I'm really confused because I'm thinking, why was he still free after everything that happened? At that time, Ta was free to go wherever he decided to go. Ta Vanderly returned to Tempe. At this point, we had to turn over the investigation to the Tempe Police Department. Ta checks into a hotel in Phoenix. Yeah, it's Ta. He said he didn't go to the house because the police were all over there. I've got something for you, hotel reception. I remember on the phone, he sounded real kind of groggy and spacey. I uh, jumped in the car and went down to the hotel. I talked to the person at the front desk and they said he had walked down here and he uh, seemed like he was on something. I took the briefcase. I found a uh, power of attorney that everything he owned he was leaving to me. The minute I read that, I knew in my heart he was committing suicide. I called the police before I even went to his room. Phoenix PD sends a detective to accompany Terry. She's determined to confront Ta. He's the only one that knows where she is. And I've got to stop this. I, I've, I've got to stop him from killing himself. I really believed that if I could get in there and talk to him, I could get him to tell me. I had in my mind that I was going to offer to help him get away in exchange for telling me where she was. I was really willing to say anything. Ta? It's me, Terry. Let me in. I fell asleep. Took a pill. And he says, I only she can come in. Just you. And I just took a deep breath and I walked in. And I remember he reached behind me and locked the door. I said, they're, they're going to come in and get you. Do you understand that? I said, Ta, please look at me. Did you kill my mother? do anything. I remember at that moment, I like stepped back and I took this breath that didn't come from me. It's almost like I felt myself shift into somebody else. And I reached up like my mom did with her fingernails and I straightened back down his hair. The only thing I can think of is my mother and I were there together. I looked at him very caringly, and I looked straight in his eyes and said, Ta, I will help you. I'll help you get away. But I need to know, did you kill my mother? I can't tell you anything. I, I just knew he wasn't going to tell me. Okay. I went to give him a hug, goodbye. I remember feeling like my mother was there and that I could feel this, like, hanging on to each other. It wasn't me. They were just kind of, like, holding each other for, like, the last time. When I 
walked away as much as I should have had all kinds of feelings. There was a calm in me. I didn't think about Ta. I just felt that my mother and I were together again. Ta moves back into the house he once shared with Loretta. Why was he still free after everything that happened, but there still is no murder, there still is no body, there still is no crime, there's no evidence. Terry was desperate to know what had happened. She wanted to know where her mother was buried. By this time, I had already started looking for her in the desert between Phoenix and Tucson. That task was tremendous. That was a needle in the haystack. Every day, for weeks on end, Terry and her friends dig in the desert outside Tucson, but she's getting nowhere. I just really became furious, and I said, I am going over there, and I don't care what I have to do to him. I'm going to twist his hands back. I'm going to do something. I'm going to find out what happened. She decides to confront Ta one more time. So I made a call to the house, and there was no answer. I called one time, two, three, four, five times, and he didn't answer. So at that point, I just knew that I needed to get to the house. When I pulled up, they had the big police vans. I couldn't see the house very well, I just the outside. And I saw police all over the place. Media was just everywhere. The cameras all go up on me and the lights go on. And they asked me, What do you think of Todd Benderley committing suicide? I remember just standing there in shock. They took their cameras down and they said, Do you know what has happened? He hung himself. Ta was found in the garage with a, an extension cord. There was a lot of emotions. One is, I think, uh, hanging yourself is very hard. And I, I had a, a sense of feeling for that. But then the second thing and the most important thing was, I'm not gonna find her. He's the only one that knows. I just knew I needed to go in the house. I wanted to fill her in the house. Just one more time. Just one more time. You just want to see things. You just want to put your hands. You just want to put your hands on something that your mother touched. I uh, found a box uh, that was full of uh, presents that she had bought at garage sales. And it had a list of things I had asked for that she was wanting to give to me. And I did ask to take those home later, and I gave those to myself at Christmas. Three days later, I went down to the police station. They started showing me all the inventions. They had checked on them, and they were all just lies. The deceit that Ta perpetrated on Loretta over those 18 years was breathtaking. He had betrayed her in every single way he could. He had financially ruined her. He had emotionally raped her. He had been a snake in the grass um, to this woman who had hoped that she, he would be the man of her dreams. The future success and happiness. He had claimed he was an orphan. His father was still alive. His brother was still alive. He claimed he had never been married. He had been married twice before, ripped off both of those women. Loretta was simply his last and his longest victim. 
Terry's nightmare is still not over. The next day, I had a phone call from a lady. She said, I need to tell you that Ta was in jail before he came to Phoenix, and I was with him, and he conned me, and he even conned me into uh, having his record expunged, and that's why I could never find it. We all thought he came from Scotland. He had come straight from prison in Texas. Everything that had happened for the last 20 years was all fake. And I really believe her life with him was worse than her death. The police investigation reveals that over 18 years, Ta embezzled around one and a half million dollars from the woman he claimed to love. But the big mystery remains. What has he done with her body? After Ta died, I didn't have any answers. From that point on, I just spent most of my days going out in the desert. Finally, there was a couple out looking for stones and rocks out in the desert. She was found with a plastic bag over her head, plastic stuffed down her throat. Loretta's skeleton was found buried under 18 inches of desert dirt. At the time of her death, she was 69 years old. Hopefully it was fast, hopefully it wasn't painful. She didn't deserve to have pain. I forgive myself for choosing a difficult person to be in a relationship with. I forgive myself for not being enough to attract a kind, gentle, secure, financially viable man as a partner. My greatest pain comes from this relationship. and Maybe leaving is the only way I can heal. This is one of those stories that just befuddles you. It is a murder mystery about someone you would never expect to be murdered in a place you'd never expect them to die by someone you'd never expect to be a killer. I had looked for so long, about 360 days in the desert, and I'd come to the idea that I wouldn't be able to find her. Finding her allowed me to go into the grieving process and the next step. Uh, up till then, I was still just on a mission and I don't give up. <laughs>